Hey everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Today, we're going to be talking about hyperspace, the indexing subsystem behind Azure Synapse. My name is Rahul Potraju, and I am from the Azure Big Data team at Microsoft. This work is in joint collaboration with my colleagues at Microsoft. Let me give you a brief overview of what my team does. First, we work on everything that's Apache Spark. Second, we offer Apache Spark as a service to a lot of customers. Third, wherever possible, we contribute back to Apache Spark. And finally, wherever we are unable to contribute back to Apache Spark, we open source it as a different project altogether. Before jumping into hyperspace, let me give you a bird's eye view of what Azure Synapse Analytics is. Synapse is an end-to-end -end integrated data platform. It allows users to perform both code-free and code-first experiences without having a lot of expertise in big data platforms. And all of this is made available through a very, very simple interface called Synapse Studio. With that being said, let me give you an overview of hyperspace. We had a couple of primary goals in mind. One, we wanted to make hyperspace completely agnostic to data formats. Two, we wanted to provide a very low cost index metadata management solution, which does not require users to maintain warm compute in order to just utilize the indexes. Three, we wanted to offer multi-engine interoperability. Next, we wanted to offer extensible indexing infrastructure to developers who were interested in plugging in new auxiliary data structures. And finally, all of these capabilities without compromising on security, privacy, and compliance. Now, let me paint the end-to-end -end vision of hyperspace indexing. The basic assumption here is that you have all of your data sitting on the data lake. We wanted to also have these secondary indexes live on the data lake. Majority of our focus has been in building this indexing infrastructure, wherein we expose the ability to create and maintain these indexes through a very simple to understand API. And as a result, we identified a bunch of components that users can start building on top of should they need to. Complementary to these efforts, we started also investing quite a lot in the query infrastructure, specifically optimizer extensions, which allow the Sparks optimizer to be index aware and algorithms for index selection. We also have investments going into index recommendation, and we wanted to do all of this behind a simple user-facing interface. Let me explain the hyperspace usage in the context of Spark. At a high level, hyperspace offers very simple to use APIs. As expected, there's a bunch of APIs for index usage and creation. Second, there are a couple of smarts that we have built in, in terms of the explain API, the what if API, and the recommend API. And there's a lot of configuration that the users can use in order to customize their use of hyperspace. And as I mentioned before, indexes live on the lake. What does this mean? So if you assume you have your data set stored in a particular folder, and imagine that the user ends up creating an index, well, hyperspace ends up creating a directory with the name of that particular index and maintains what is called as a hyperspace log. Think of this log as an operation log, which records the sequence of all operations such as create, refresh, that users might invoke on top of their index. And after every activity or an operation, the log is updated with pointers to the latest version of the index that can be used by hyperspace at runtime. Storing the index on the lake offers several advantages. First, the index can now scales. Second, because we're using an open format, we get all the surrounding benefits. For instance, in the case of hyperspace, the index is stored in Parquet, which means all hardware accelerations as well as any community contributions will add up. And third, we defined a serverless access protocol, which means that the users do not have to worry about running warm clusters just to access their indexes. Let me now tell you briefly about how index maintenance works inside hyperspace. The index maintenance mechanisms inside hyperspace make a fundamental assumption, which is 
the changes to the underlying data set happen either at the file or a partition level. Hyperspace offers three forms of refresh. First one, which is the slowest, but also offers the fastest query performance is the full refresh mode because it goes ahead and builds the entire index. The way it works is if you have your underlying data set and you ended up building an index on top of it, assume you made some changes to the underlying data set. What ends up happening is when you invoke hyperspace full refresh, it goes ahead and rebuilds the entire index so that the next time you end up getting a query, it goes ahead and uses the new version of the index. The second mode of refresh that's offered is called incremental refresh. The idea here is that it is slightly slower to do this form of a refresh, but it does allow for a reasonably fast query mechanism because it goes ahead and builds the index only on the newly added files and partitions. The way this works is assume you have your index built on top of an existing data set. And when you get a query, it ends up using this version of the index. Now, when you end up adding some data set blocks six to 10, and you go ahead and call incremental refresh, hyperspace will go ahead and build the new versions of this index, which is four, five, and six only on top of the data that has been added here. So that the next time you end up getting your query, hyperspace uses the combination of these two sets of blocks in order to address your query. The third mode that's available is called quick refresh. All it does is it captures some metadata for the appended and deleted files and leverages what is called as a hybrid scan operator that we have introduced inside hyperspace. We do recommend that you check out these details in the paper. The way this works is assume you have your original data set and you ended up making some modification to it. What hyperspace can now do is it will at runtime determine that you have already built some index blocks for your existing data. So it ends up using that portion of the index and then goes ahead and does a linear scan on the newly appended data set. Hyperspace is available out of box on Azure Synapse Analytics and you can feel free to check out. There are lots of notebooks and examples in case you want to give it a try. Now let's talk briefly about hyperspace performance. We have evaluated hyperspace using workloads derived from the standard suite of TPC benchmarks. In the top graph here, the X axis depicts the query number and the Y axis shows the duration that the query took to finish. What we can readily observe is there are definitely gains as high as 8.9, but at the same time, there are queries where there's pretty much no acceleration. What we have observed in our internal experimentation is there are no regressions. Similarly, the bottom graph shows the workload derived from TPC DS for the top 20 queries. And similar to the first set of observations, we did not observe any regressions. Overall, hyperspace was able to deliver a reasonable acceleration on two standard industry benchmarks by just using commodity hardware. What we have described in the hyperspace paper is more of a beginning than an end to this project. In the short term, we have a very rich roadmap planned, including the addition of multiple types of indexes like the data skipping index, the Z order index and the bloom filter indexes. And one of the most interesting challenges that we are working on actively is the exploration of this idea behind a recommendation engine that is able to recommend multiple types of indexes. And we are definitely open for longer term collaborations. To conclude, Hyperspace is an extensible indexing subsystem that we have built for Azure Synapse Analytics, but the entire source code is completely open source. Please do feel free to drop by our GitHub repository, check out the source code and engage with us on any new ideas that you may want to collaborate with us on. And I would highly recommend that you check out the full paper if you're interested in learning about some of the underlying architectural decisions that Hyperspace has taken. Thank you so much for attending this talk and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.